Hey guys, and welcome to part two of building a tic-tac-toe app in JavaScript. So if you remember in part one, we have a really basic AI, which basically just picks the next open space. And in this part two tutorial, we want to incorporate a more robust AI using the min-max algorithm. So starting off, I'm going to cover what min-max is on the whiteboard, and then we can go come back over and start implementing it in JavaScript. So let's go see what it looks like on the whiteboard. So here's an example game state, and where if we're player X, we have three locations where we can put our token, which is the far right middle, we can do the far left the bottom, or we can do the bottom middle. Right? So from those those two, notice the right one is a win, right? So we don't need to further go down the recursion or the tree to figure out other places. But on the left one, there's two more places where O can be on the far left. Or in the middle and then of course those in the game because there's only one more move and then in the middle we have O can be on the right or the bottom and then X has to be on the right side which again is going to end in a cats game or a tie game so how min max works is that at every level you kind of switch between finding the max value and finding the min value until you get to the very bottom terminal nodes which are the nodes that end in ties or a player actually winning. So looking at the terminal nodes or the ending spots, whenever we have a win for us, so if x wins, we're going to return the formula 10 minus d, and which in this case is 7, and then the node above is going to be grabbing the max value, which is only one value, so we go ahead and populate the 7. And then if it's a tie, we're going to go ahead and return a 0, which again, there's only one value, so we just move it up. Um, for this one, it's also a tie, so we're going to return 0, and move that up the tree, and then on this example, O wins, so we need to do D minus 10, which is negative 8. And then again, we take the min of those two, which is negative 8, and move that up. And then the last one, X wins, so again, we're going to do the formula at the top, where it says 10 minus D, so that's going to leave us with 9. And then on the far left, we're going to take the min of the two bottom children, so that's going to be 0. And then we can go to the very top node, and see that that's, we need to take the max of all three of these, which is a 9. So if you take a second and just look, the best value if we were to play would be obviously the far right, which leaves us an instant win. So that's our best path. All right, so that covers how to actually you know work out the algorithm. So why exactly does this algorithm work? So it turns out that if you were to think about two people playing um, tic-tac-toe against each other, right? you have two opponents. The player X's goal, in this case, is to maximize his move, to pick the move that puts him in the best position. So we can kind of use a positive large number to represent the best path that he can take. Now our opponent, on the other hand, is also trying to do the, the same thing. He's trying to pick the best path for him to win. So we can actually represent that as a negative number so something that's super, super large and negative represents his best, best path. So this is why we can do the whole min and max, because every player, it's, his goal is to just maximize his value, and the opponent's job is to minimize his value, because both of those min and max values represent his best path. So then this is why in the first node in the tree, in the very top one, we need to grab the max value that all of our children return. And then we go down to a depth one. We now kind of switched over to our opponent, which is O. So his job is to pick the min value, which is returned from his children. And then again, we go to depth two, which is again us X playing. Our goal is to pick the max value, which is returned from our children. And then later we reach depth three, the game's over, and we return a value. And then the second thing I'll make a note of is why do we do this formula 10 minus D or D minus 10? If you think about it, you want to return a better path the closer it is up to the top of the tree, right? Because you don't want to return 10 for, let's say, a depth of 3 because you have the possibility that your opponent may prevent you from hitting that path. Therefore, it's not as valuable to get down to, let's say, the 7 on the far left than it is to just take the 9 right then and there on the far right. So that's why we kind of do the 10 minus D and the D minus 10 so that we add some extra values depending on how far down the tree we go. 
And then the third thing I'll note is how do we change the difficulty of our players or of our AI, right? So to do that, we just simply cut off how deep we can traverse this tree to figure out the min-max. So if we were to say, only allow our AI to go down a depth of two, then we wouldn't see these situations in the far left where we could potentially win with a seven. That would be cut off, so therefore we only know a certain amount of look ahead, which makes our AI in a sense dumber, versus seeing all the different possibilities gives the AI a better chance of winning in the end. All right, so now that we have a better understanding of what MinMax is, how to implement it, and kind of why it works, I know that overview wasn't the best, but um, hopefully it just gives you enough understanding of how you can at least implement it, and then later on it may make more sense as you implement it as to why it works. So the first step is inside this move AI function, I'm going to go ahead and call or return min max. I'm going to pass a grid, which is that global grid object that has blank spaces and updates over time. We're going to do a depth of zero, and then we're also going to do a player. In this case, it's always going to be the computer token who's playing because the AI is only in charge of the computer. And then I'll go ahead and create a new min max function, which takes a new grid. It takes a depth, and it also takes a player. So again, like we described in the whiteboard, min-max works, first of all, by checking if the game state is over, right? So you need to traverse all the nodes until you get the terminal nodes, and first check, is the game over? So we can say const game state is equal to is game over, and pass it the new grid here. And then if, in our case, game state is false, that's when we know we should continue because there's still an open spot left, but no one has won and there's no tie. And then we can say else if game state is equal to null, we know that there's a tie, game state is equal to um, player token, and else if game state is equal to computer token. So those are the four cases that can happen. Computer one, player one, there's a tie game, or there's an empty space that the game can still keep going. So first of all, like we mentioned on the whiteboard, what do you do when you reach a terminal node and the computer wins? Well, in our case, the computer player is our max player. So if you remember that formula 10 minus depth, that's what we need to use. So we just say return, um, so yeah, 10 minus depth. And then if the player wins, we return depth minus 10, because we need a negative number for the player. We return 0 if it is a tie game. And then lastly, the most important step is if we reach a state where there's more game that can be played, we need to start writing the min-max algorithm. So here, what we do is we first declare a values array, which is going to keep track of all of our children. We then need to loop through all the potential spots. So I'll go ahead and do a double for loop. I'll say if new grid i j is not equal to an empty space, we just continue over that spot. And in fact, instead of using new grid, we're going to say grid copy equals um, clone deep new grid. So what we do is we need to take a copy of the grid so that we can use that copy in all the different function calls we do. Otherwise we're going to modify the same grid over and over again and it's going to cause a lot of issues. So we're looping through every spot, finding ones that have an empty space, we copy the grid, and then what we do is we do grid copy ij and set it equal to the current player token that we're doing. So if you notice down here we're passing a computer token as the start token. So in that spot we pretend like we place a computer token in the spot and then what we need to do is call min max again with grid copy depth plus one because we're going down to a new depth or level of the tree and then we also need to do um, kind of switch the token around so if the token is already the player token, we change it to the computer token. Otherwise, we set it to the player token. 
and I can say constant value is equal to min max. <clears throat> and then I can say values dot push value. So now down here we can say if player was the computer token. Remember computer token is our max player. And then player token is our min player. We need to say um, let's say const max is equal to low dash max by, which allows us to pass an array and get back a max value out of that array based on some type of callback function. So in this case, we're going to say we want to find the max by cost. And then if depth is equal to zero, we just want to return the cell. Otherwise, we just return the cost. In this case, I need to say max and max. And I'll do that same logic for the min. And the last step here is instead of pushing value, we actually need to push some type of structure where we're keeping track of the value and we're also keeping track of the cell. So value can instead be cost is equal to value and then cell is going to be the current i and the current j that we added. So now at this point, I think we can go ahead and run this and see what happens. Computer token is not defined. Got some misspelling there. Cool, so minmax is actually working and we are playing against an AI who's incredibly difficult. There's no way you're gonna be able to beat this AI. So if I were to go here, the AI is going to block me no matter where I go. Right? So again, we can just do one more recap on the minmax algorithm. So what we do is we're at the top node player is going to be the player token, depth is zero, new grid is equal to a blank grid. Or I guess in this case it would be like an X if I were to play something first. Then what we do is we loop through all the empty spots that are here on the grid, and we pretend as if the um, computer placed a value there. And then when they do, we go back and call minmax again. It's going to keep on going down until we like, reach those terminal nodes. <clears throat> Um, and then it's going to return the values of the terminal nodes down here when we reach a state where the game's done. Once that happens, we're going to push the values here. So we have an array of values. And then at this point, depending on if we're the computer player or the, um, the real player, we run through the values and grab the min or the max. And then if we're depth zero, we need to return the cell so that we can you know, in the UI, paste it in I and J. Or if we're not in depth zero, we just return the cost. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our two-part tutorial about how to build JavaScript's tic-tac-toe game. Um, again, if you have any feedback or questions about this video, or if you want to request videos in the future, feel free to leave me a comment or in the uh, video below. And be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe and like if you thought this tutorial was pretty good. All right, again, thanks for watching. Have a good day.